Welcome to Simply Bitcoin, the channel that breaks down all the daily Bitcoin news, the daily fail, the meme review, software releases, and the websites by plebs. We've got it all. Drop us a like and subscribe. Today, we've got a special guest, fellow Bitcoiner, Joe Rogers, who is also the creator of Bitcoin Words, and he maintains that. All kinds of amazing Bitcoin articles there. We will post the link in the show notes. Okay, let's kick it off with the numbers. Here we go, guys. We're currently at a block height of 660,695. The current Bitcoin price, 18,524. Chain rewrite days, 604. The current lightning capacity, 1,068.30 BTC. Awesome. The numbers are looking good. Strong consolidation. But unfortunately, Satoshi, the Bitcoin chicken, has to stay in his chicken coop today because the price of Bitcoin still has not broken the all-time high. And Phil, I think it's a perfect time for the daily fail. Uh, Eric Wall is at a uh, blockchain conference uh, in Dubai. <laughs> and uh, he decided to post some of, the, uh, some of the interesting stuff that they're doing on the blockchain. <laughs> So here we go. I'm just going to read a couple of these, right? Obviously, we're going to post a link to this in the show notes so you could go through the whole entire cringeworthy stuff. But uh, it says uh, blockchain will help get the COVID-19 vaccine to the most vulnerable. Uh, Louis Vuitton says uh, they're investing in IoT, AI and blockchain. Um, on another one here, um, you know, we've got uh, there's government services running on the blockchain. So anyways, this is a whole bunch of really cringe stuff um, all about these blockchain projects. And, and of course, you know, what people need to realize is this, okay? Blockchain, incredibly slow database, okay? Mm -hmm. So unless you require censorship resistance, okay? Um, unless you require, censor, uh, yeah, censorship resistance and decentralization, you really don't need a blockchain for any of these things. You can do this all with an in-house database like SQL or SQL, however you want to pronounce it, okay? But essentially, it's just a giant scam when it comes to the tokens, right? Because the tokens are never actually used in any of these products, okay? All it is is software. That's all it is. It, the token is not required. And what they do is, is that they trick you. So they trick you with the fancy software and the cool tech, and then they try to sell you a token. That's... That's my take. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's just kind of like, you know, when all those those shitcoin tokens came out in 2017, where it's like pot token, banana token, whatever. What are you supposed to do? Buy banana tokens so you could buy bananas, you know, or like buy pot tokens so you could buy pot? Mary Jane. Really right? <laughs> so it's like it's like it doesn't make sense. And another thing, every time I hear blockchain. Right. And that was a huge push, like in 2017, when everyone, when any person puts blockchain before whatever they're doing it uh, in my head, it's an automatic scam. Yeah. OK, blockchains suck. They're very slow databases. They're very heavy. But if you need them for a public ledger. Right. Uh, so if you need them for a public ledger so that everyone sees, right, to make sure not not everyone's cheating, right, it does solve the computer science problem, the the two Byzantine, the two general or the three general Byzantine problems, whatever. I'll put the pop up of what I'm talking about. But but blockchain is it's 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 a very inefficient database, and you don't need to use it. So the fact that he went to a blockchain conference. That's to tell that it's just it's it's just a waste of time. And yeah. I want to get our guest input in this. I'm very I'm actually very excited on on what he has to say on all this. Hey, guys. Uh, so I read this uh, this afternoon. I actually uh, ate it up uh, about an hour and a half ago and I was laughing uh, because, yeah, the narrative was <laughs> blockchain, not Bitcoin uh, back in 17. Of course, um, that's been pretty much a false narrative. Uh, but overall, just seeing the thread and some of the pictures from the conference itself, it looks like a complete shit show. And um, it looks like not a lot of substance. I mean, when you have like inter enterprise powerhouse IBM there talking about putting bananas on blockchain and that's mm -hmm. the big use case. I mean, like it's their they're grasping at straws, really trying to fit, you know, square through a round hole. Um, and I think that, Phil, you knocked it out of the park. There's one use case for blockchain and uh, we've got that figured out. And it doesn't make a lot of sense for all the stuff that they're talking about. So censorship resistance, it's slow and inefficient, but damn it, it works. And there's really only one use case 
uh, for it to work, in my opinion. Exactly right. It, it, it's it's useful for a public ledger, but nothing else, right? Yeah. You can't you can't take a little bit of blockchain, right? What gets they want? We we don't want the Bitcoin. We just want a little bit of blockchain, and that stuff doesn't work. And Phil, it's time for the daily meme review. All right, so our meme for today is brought to us by uh, some random YouTube channel, but I found it. I thought it was funny. I hope you guys think it's funny. Let's check it out. Coisa mais linda, mais cheia de graça. Ela, menina que vem, que passa. All right, so I really like the messaging. Um, it, 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 I really like the messaging. It was it's kind of confusing, uh, but I, I did get it. It was if you hold, you don't get wrecked. <laughs> if you don't hold, you get wrecked in various ways, like cannons falling on you. I guess I don't know, but uh, Phil, that was a pretty solid meme. I'm I'm gonna give it an eight. What about you? And then we'll move on to our guest. Uh, I I think I'm uh, in this case I. A little bit, uh, I guess, meaner than you are. I'm going with 7.5. Okay, fair enough. And what does our guest think? Oh, man, I forgot my uh, magic eraser board here. Oh, no um, worries. Okay, don't worry. so out of 10, I'll, I'll put it in for you. 10 being, I don't know, really strong. It's your, it's, uh, I'm going to go with a uh, 6.5. I thought it was great, guys. You know, I love a good cinematic dub like that and uh, like the music and the changing styles. Great scene. Uh, but I don't know. It could have been a little bit crisper. I, I thought it was great though. Yeah, it definitely. It, it was, it was rough around the edges. Uh, it did make me laugh. Uh, so I have a weak spot for laughing. I know. So I, I, look, I, here's the deal. Like memes matter and we need uh, a ton of memes and we need more of them all the time. And even bad memes are good memes. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Even, even, even bad memes are good memes. I might use that as our Easter egg tomorrow. There you go. Um, and Phil, what are your thoughts on this? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that that's what stopped it from getting a fail, right? Because even bad memes are good memes. <laughs> but um, no, I'm sorry. I, I just, I mean, look, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. All right, fine. You know, relatable movie. Lots of people have seen it. Sure. But the symbolism is kind of like it's if you're not really in. If, I don't know. I, I, th I think it, it would be confusing, you know, like it's entertaining, but confusing to some people. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that, that's why it, it really didn't have that message across and but then the it made, sound eyes yeah you know, the, the, and so like now you think that, like the eye pops if the eye pops it was weird but it made me laugh so that's why i give a name <laughs> uh, yeah so um phil it's time for the daily news sponsored by crypto cloaks all right, guys. So this is kind of adding to, you know, basically this, 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 what we've been reporting for so long, right? Uh, this Nigerian man <laughs> tried to smuggle uh, around uh, sixty thousand dollars while while he hide while while he had he, he tried to to hide it in his suitcase, and obviously, you know, he was he was trying to travel from it was from the. Jomo Kandira International Air Airport, and uh, those funds were confiscated. But the reason I wanted to bring that up, right, uh, and then we'll move on to the other pieces of news, is Bitcoin changes this, okay? You no longer have to put all this money into a bank. I mean, sorry, not into a bank, but all this money into a suitcase and then travel overseas. Now you could literally keep that money in your bank, right? Memorizing those 24 words or those 12 words, right? You can memorize them and all of a sudden 
there's nothing to seize, right? And even if you have a bad memory, you could write down those words and put them somewhere in between your clothing, right? And then, then the, the government argument could say, oh, well, we'll start searching everyone. It's not feasible to start searching everybody, right? So this idea of, you know, these government controls of, of this $10,000 limit, which they were very sneaky about when they implemented it back in 1972, that $10,000 limit is the equivalent of $60,000 back in 1972, right? So they kept the $10,000 limit. They haven't changed it, but inflation has decreased the actual monetary value. But now that you have Bitcoin, it allows people to cross borders with their entire wealth, their entire net worth, right? And the customs officers, no one, they can't stop you. They can't. It's impossible. What? What are they going to try to seize your brain? Right? You know. So it, it changes the game, and and I and I feel like in the long term, it's gonna it's gonna liberate mankind. Um, and I want to get your thoughts, Phil, and then our guests. The case for Bitcoin gets made with every one of these articles, right? It's like every single one of these pieces of news that comes out, you know, where somebody attempts to just simply take their wealth with them, so that you know, it doesn't have to be confiscated and then it ends up confiscated. Every one of these cases simply proves the point uh, of why Bitcoin needed and why it's obviously, you know, having the traction that it's having. So, you know, I think we're going to see still more and more of this. I mean, this is not something new, right? That this is something that people have tried, you know, have done throughout history, you know, and, Look, Bitcoin just enables it and it's now going to make governments. I mean, look, you know, if people are fleeing your country and you're losing revenue, um, maybe it's because you're not governing that country very well. And now maybe once again, you know, this goes back to the proposition that governments are going to have to start to offer value if they want to keep people because a lot of the measures that they have for keeping people within the borders are slowly being eroded with technologies brought on by, you know, starting with the, you know, not starting with the internet, but brought on heavily by the internet and now reinforced by Bitcoin. Absolutely. And uh, what, what are your, what are your guess What are your thoughts on this, Mr. Joe Rogers? Well, I think that uh, this is another great example of just how much the, the state, regardless of where you are, despises you and hates you. Uh, the fact that you can't take your money, your earnings, and go wherever the hell you want is a big red flag to me. And I think, Phil, you, you guys both knocked out a part, but Phil, I especially liked your part uh, talking about the state providing services for people. I think it's a really important thing. And it goes back to the sovereign individual thesis um, that, uh, you know, we're going to see the dissolution of states because uh, they will either put up or shut up. They're going to provide goods and services that people are willing to pay for. And if they're not, people with money, um, particularly Bitcoin, we'll be able to go to more friendly jurisdictions. So I'm bullish on technology, bullish on Bitcoin, of course, and uh, bearish on states in general. And uh, the bigger, the worse. I completely agree. Yeah. And, and I, I think you, you really hit the nail on the head. People are going to be able to vote with not only their wallet, but also their feet. And, uh, you know, speaking of states, uh, our next piece of news is kind of insidious, guys. I, I want to get your thoughts on this. So uh, basically, this came out on the block, right? And there's a follow-up article to it, but uh, it looks like France is on the verge of imposing mandatory KYC rules for all crypto transactions and industry uh, sources say. So what do I mean by this? Uh, basically, this is absolutely crazy, but they want to implement or they're going to try. I, I think that this is impossible, but they're going to try to implement or also regulate crypto to crypto transactions, right? So if I want to send Bitcoin to Phil, right, now I'm going to have to fill out some KYC forms sure. to let the state know that I'm sending it to Phil and I'm trying to send it to, to sure. someone else, right? So again, this is an unwinnable battle. Uh, the state is not going to be able to regulate this. They cannot feasibly do this. They don't have enough resources, right? The only thing that they will be able to regulate, and this is this is what they've been trying to do, right? But they're, they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Because if they overregulate, it, it, what's going to happen is exactly what Joe touched upon earlier, is that Bitcoiners are just going to move to friendlier jurisdictions, right? And if they underregulate it, 
well, that's that's just good for Bitcoiners, but the state's going to lose power in the process, right? So it looks like what you're starting to see is a pattern all around the world. These regulators are, are trying to implement harsher and harsher KYC laws, right, under the guise of protecting against terrorism, right, or protecting against a uh, 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 drug trafficking and all those BS. But that's just BS, right? They're not really doing it for those purposes. They're actually doing it as a form of control. But the audacity of these French regulators to think that they could regulate Bitcoin to Bitcoin transactions between different individuals on the Bitcoin network, they cannot do that. They could put it in their law books, but that's impossible to enforce, right? So I want to get uh, Phil's thoughts on this and then we'll move on to our guest. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting watching the government in in fantasy land, you know, uh, live out their essentially that they're LARPing. <laughs> That's what they're doing, because they're pretending that they can actually do this, and and they totally can't. I mean, look, at the end of the day, you need every single person in France that has anything to do with Bitcoin that has a Bitcoin wallet to sit there and KYC themselves and their address. That is the only way that they can even come close to trying to do something is people volunteering that information so that they can put it together because otherwise they do not have the resources to put it together. They really don't. And even if they did, they will not be able to do it properly or with any degree of certainty, I, I don't think. Um, so it's, it's just really sad, um, you know, watching them do this. And I know right now they think that they're being smart and they, they're giving this impression that they have control they have no control. They have nothing. Absolutely. They're, they're, you know what I mean? Like the, their hand is empty. They've got no cards. So all they have now is the illusion. If you can get people to believe it, you can get people to censor themselves. You can get people to, you know, give up their information, create the links for them. Yeah, it, it's, it's they're, like, they're barking to the wrong crowd, man. It's like airport security, right? It's security yeah. theater, right? It's, exactly. It has it has to give make you feel on a psychological level that there is theater. And before we move on to our guest thoughts, I just kind of wanted to add some more context to what Phil was saying. But this is basically France' excuse. What we are trying to do, this, this is a quote, of course, what we are trying to do in France is to fight against the financing of terrorism. It's always about terrorism oh, through so crypto cool. assets. But our overall... Oh, but our overall goal remains to foster innovation through crypto assets, said the source, right? We'll carry both these messages to the EU level. So it's a crock of shit and they can't do it. And Joe, what are your thoughts on all this BS? Uh, I think that uh, overall, our friends that are regulators, they're going to regulate. Regulators going to regulate. And um, to Phil's point, you know, they can't do a damn thing when it comes to Bitcoin. Uh, but some of these shit coins, you know, they're centralized. They'll probably be able to put their thumb and pressure on them and regulate some of those uh, cryptos, if you will. Uh, but Bitcoin is honey badger and does not care. They cannot stop math. They can't stop the truth. And uh, it's a big middle finger uh, to the state and uh, centralized power. So um, this is it shows how out of touch regulators are. It's laughable. Um, and also it's painful. I mean, it's painful for our French friends. Um, that are going to have to be putting up with this bullshit. Uh, but I think that it'll be interesting learning experience. You know, like it's good that these fights are happening. They, they need to happen sooner than later uh, so that other states can learn like, hey, we can't win this fight. Um, they can bitch and moan all they want. Um, so I guess what, what is the next step? What, what happens next? Do you guys think? Is it um, a crackdown on any uh, French website that has a BTC pay server instance or like, what, what it, how does the game theory play out for you guys? I, I honestly think like in, uh, I like to look back on history, right? And I, I like to give the example of like LimeWire, for example. Uh, I said example twice, but LimeWire, what happened LimeWire and Napster, right? Where basically all the music, all the music companies, you know, banded together and said, listen, we need to we need to take this down. Right. But at the end of the day, they weren't able to do that. You cannot stop the Internet. Right. You can't stop, you know, peer to peer transactions. That's essentially what LimeWire and Napster were doing, except they were instead of except of doing it with money, they were doing it with music. Right. So it's an unwinnable battle. They can't they can't beat this. Right. So eventually they're going to be forced 
to, you know, adopt it, right? So in the music industry is in the form of Spotify, it was in the form of iTunes, where you no longer had to pay for each individual song, you could just pay for, you know, a, a membership, but the, the music industry had to come to that, or else they were just going to lose that ginormous amount of revenue from people just, okay, you know what, I don't feel like paying 99 cents a song, I could just download it for free. So the music industry was forced to innovate in order to attract customers to use them instead, right? So I think that's what's going to happen with Bitcoin, right? The, the, now that fiat has a competition, right? Before fiat didn't have a competition, fiat ha was forced upon you, right? It was a necessary evil. Now that fiat has competition, now fiat has to compete with Bitcoin, the sounder money, to incentivize people to use it instead of you know, so Phil, what are your thoughts on that? I actually, I, I just want to go back to the whole terrorism thing because I, I'm still stuck on that. Okay. Why were they never able to stop terrorism before? Like it, it's such BS, right? They sit there and they're like, well, you know, Bitcoin enables terrorism. Really? What happened? So what's been what before the last 11 years? <laughs> what's your excuse? You're able to track the money. You still couldn't figure it out. Because they're completely psychotic. Yeah. Sorry, that, that was just the point I wanted to make. It's it's like the war on drugs, man. It's the war on drugs. The war on drugs. <laughs> the war on drugs since it's been going on since like the what 1930s, 1940s. How's that going? They're losing tremendously, right? You can't stop yeah. it, right? <laughs> so uh just just let the people be free, yeah. man. But uh Phil, there was a software release today. Why don't you tell us about it? Software releases. Okay, so it looks like C Lightning version 0 0.9.2 .2 was released. We've got that down below in the show notes. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. Guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of Simply Bitcoin. I just want to give a shout out to our guest, the legendary Joe Rogers. You guys can go follow him at underscore Joe Rogers on Twitter. Go check out his awesome stuff. He, he does the media ops at Bitcoin Magazine, and he's also building something called Bitcoin Words. It's a monthly Bitcoin journal curating the most important writings on Bitcoin. Of course, I'm going to link that also in the link description and guys we will see you on tomorrow for another episode of simply bitcoin hodl everybody pew, 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 pew.